Tristan's back with the grooming equipment. And as you see, Satara sprays. So does her dad. Her dad will... You can spray him, groom him, saddle him, bridle him, tack him. It don't matter how you want to say it. Because I know saddling and tacking is the same thing. Tacking, to me, is just a term for being able to put everything all on once, where saddling, bridling, is breaking down each individual thing as tacking them up. But anyways, you can put tack on and off Xander at liberty, which means no halter, no lead rope. Not tied in a round pin or in a stall, and you can spray him and groom him the same without a halter tied standing in his stall. This is something that Harley doesn't do. You cannot spray her. No matter how much I have worked on it, I have only been able to, now I think you, we can spray her mane, spray her tail, and I don't remember if it's her right or left side, you can spray and that is it. I don't know what's happened in Harley's past, but it's taking a while to get her through all of her issues. Harley is in full to Memphis, Last Smoking Dragon. You can find his info at vikingranch.com, our website. He is one of our other studs that is here. He's our painted stud. Um... But Harley's in full to him for a 2022 full, and that full will be available to the public. I thought a tiny little bit on inkling on possibly keeping it. Now, if I do happen to keep it, if it's a filly only, would I keep it? It has to come out with a certain color, certain pattern for me to keep it, and then mom would definitely be going up for sale after I get two more foals out of Xander because I will be breeding Harley back to Xander in 2022 for a 2023 foal. I think I said that right. And Xander is Satara's dad so we'll have another one like her in that one. I am not keeping. Satara is my first. I'm not getting rid of her until later, if I decide. And you see, she grooms. This is also something Harley... Harley's good at grooming, but sometimes she gets a little skeptical. You can't even show Mom the brush. Mom will just freak out. Mom's a little retarded, I think. That's not me being nice to the mare. I do believe Satara already stands 13 hands, not sure. Maybe she's 12.2, 12.3 hands. Haven't measured her. Um, our Pertron filly, Ravenwood Knight, she's 13.3, and she's almost, Satara's almost as tall as Ravenwood, but not quite. Looks like about a half a hand to a hand shorter than her. And by the way, folks, Satara actually leads off the property. We can lead her up and down the roads. We can lead her all over the property. Don't know if we'll get that get to that today. And yes, we actually have her tied tight to the tie rig because she knows how to stand tied. And yeah, sometimes she pulls back, but she likes to sometimes be a butt about her feet. And she even gives the farrier a fuss. And this is something that she, on her third trim, decided to start doing is, nope, I don't want my feet done. I'm going to yank them from you. Yeah, 
you know, she's being a little bit of a turd, and that's okay. I don't like it when they act like that. Because I want my horses standing. Me doing farrier work myself. I don't like naughty horses. No horse stands all day and will stand for me. If they fight me just a little bit, that's okay. But they're going to really put up a fight and set back and yank their feet from me. I'm going to charge you more. So that's why I... It's a big pet peeve of mine for horses to be acting like Satara's doing right now. Because if I don't want to sh work with its feet, why would I expect my anybody else to work with my horse's feet? And I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, Oh, my horse stands perfectly fine, or it's a, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not the one doing its feet. Well, you just should actually take into consideration your farrier and the time and the effort that they put in and the dangers that it is handling these guys' feet. I mean, these little guys can end up killing you. Just one swift kick to the face. To kick you just right in the chest. I mean, these guys can just swish you in the face with their tail and get you in the eye. And you could actually lose your eye. If they swish you just right. I had a farrier back in Arizona that lost his eye to a horse swishing him in the face. It actually literally cut his eye. Now move to another one, see if she'll stand still, and then we'll go back to the other. And see, and I'd actually be up there enforcing the word at, at stand, because I can't handle the horses right now. I'm really not safe to for another seven weeks, I'd go ahead and give her a good slap in the front of the chest for that next time if she does that. Not now, because she's already done it. Because she'll think you're doing it when she's standing. But don't let her. Yeah, there you go. Don't let her get away with it. Harley's pretty damn good with her feet. Xander's good on any given day. He was pretty gnarly when I first got him and was starting to work with him where he would just rip his feet from me and then Luke was trimming him and Luke and I were having the same issues and then Luke and I got him to where he would, he'd quit even with me just working with him and working with him. I want to make a funny here and go, oh no, Star's going to get an ass whooping, but no, it's actually, she's just going to untie her. See if she'll actually have you pick out her feet without having her tied. And just use a trailer as a block. Sometimes these guys actually have a difficult time picking up their feet because they don't know how to balance themselves. And she wants to lay down. She's not quite sure how to balance herself. She does know better, because I've seen her do better. You have taken so long to do this video, Satara, I'm going to have to make it a second video. Satara tying and picking up her feet to be cleaned out. I think I've lost track of what I've tried saying twice. My YouTube channel is fairly new. I think I've had it for about a year. It originally started on just putting videos up of horses that I was either rehoming or actually selling because some of the horses I got in after moving out here to Victorville from Arizona, Arizona I mean Anza, um, people weren't quite honest with me and that led me to either 
keep the product and add on to what I actually needed that would work for me. And then that would lead me to having probably about 20 horses right now. And I can't do that. You can't keep everything if you're trying to run a business or trying to get somewhere in life with these animals. I was originally trying to breed black and white paints, overos to be exact, with blue eyes. I invested quite a bit of money in some really good stock, or what I thought was really good stock, to only find out that they were had Herda and Lethal White. Those are two things that I will not breed for, and I am not into breeding. So, I... I weighed my options on my mares because they were 17 and 18 years old, if I remember correctly. I decided I'm just going to cut my losses, cut my money. I'm putting them up for sale. I sold the one mare for $750. My other one that was supposed to be in full for less than, I think it was $2,500, not $3,500 like I had originally paid. Um, and then... I now she's just having a fit. She knows better, and as you see, she knows how oh, pressure release jump forward. Anyways, long story short, I got out of the paints, wanted to do the Andalusians. So, being new to Victorville and the surrounding area, and I guess people realizing that I was too green on Andalusians. Somebody tried to pass on a BLM Mustang as an Andalusian to me. And not knowing any better, actually, my girlfriend traded her fully registered, in full, Cremello quarter horse mare, fully registered, for this horse. And I paid my girlfriend $1,000, and that made her... $500, I think, short of the original sale price and all of this stuff. I can't remember details anymore, really. I don't try to on some of this stuff because it's like, why why worry about it? And I'm only bringing it up because, well, it's either this or silence watching this horse not listening with her foot. But anyways, I ended up actually selling that mare because, man, um... Things just weren't working out with her, and then I found out um, not long after I actually traded her for a thoroughbred gelding that uh, she couldn't have foals. And I had already sold, sold most of my paint stock to get my Andalusian colt, which is Satara Sire. Um, amongst all of this, I got in a pretty nice draft cross filly. That was supposed to be four years old. Found out that she was barely three. And I was told that this horse was fully broke. Just needed, not broke, but fully trained on the ground. Full ground training. And I went ahead, Purchased a horse out of state, got video and everything, and I get this horse that walks off the trailer with a with a grade three body score. This horse was scared of everything, took the lead rope off of it, and boy, the next day you couldn't fucking catch it. You couldn't catch it, couldn't do nothing with it. Even broke my finger. Gal was told and the gal laughed at me and said that, you know, guess you don't know anything about horses, you're not a real horse trainer. Well, really? Okay, so... That's fine. Worked with her, worked with her, and I ended up just saying, screw it. Because I had high hopes of using her for dressage. That was the whole point in getting her, and I wanted to get into drafts. So it's like, oh, perfect. And she actually looked like one of the Budweiser Clydesdales, just without feathering. It was really cool. Um, but anyways, real quick story is, I ended up trading that horse for an actual... And illusion mare. And bred and bred and bred that mare. And I finally took her in to have her check to see why she wasn't getting, wasn't coming into foal. And it's because, well, lo and behold, she got have babies. She was full of cysts inside. And she had cancer. Yeah. So, I ended up having to rehome her because, well, I 
I'm not going to keep mares around if I'm trying to breed, right? Because otherwise it's, why should I have to keep everything, people? Hello, listen. Why should I have to keep horses? Just because people want to say, oh, you're a horse flipper. Well, I'm sorry. If a horse doesn't work out for me, yeah, I'm going to rehome it. I can't keep everything. I currently have 10 horses that I feed right now, and I have two up for sale. Not because I can't afford to feed them, but because I am tra 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 switching over what I'm breeding. One of the horses just isn't working out because I've just decided I don't think he's stallion material. I'm going to be gelding him because I don't feel comfortable selling him as a stud. I mean, he's already got our brand on him. You know, so it's like I really rather geld him and get him finished up and then turn around and sell him. Yeah, he's available right now as a stud, but I raised his price because I realized people are starting to come around and going, yeah, I'll take that $2,000 stud. Well, I'm sorry, that $2,000 stud's worth more than $2,000, especially with a pair of testicles and you can teach him to breed. But anyways, I just can't keep everything. I want to breed drafts. I want to breed draft crosses. I want to do my Liberty stuff. I want to do movie train trick training and stuff with these guys. I'm going back to doing all that dressage, working at Cretation as in the Spanish form and not the, like the one that goes with dressage kind of, so to speak, like dressage, jumping and all that. Yes. Do you want to even do jumping? Yes. Did say that. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. So I'm going to be focusing on keeping my ILHA bred horses until I can get an ANCCE stud. That means Xander will either find a new home eventually at some point, not any time now. This is like future speaking. He will be fully trained because he is going in in the middle of middle to late spring to early summer to Denise for professional dressage training for three months. Yep, folks, I'm serious about professional dressage training him and actually doing this with my horses. And a quick little reference, you saw that she put the lead rope behind the horse's leg. They pull on themselves when they do that and they learn to stand. That is why we're doing it. Doesn't hurt them. Actually it can hurt us more than them. She doesn't have rope burns or anything. But those Nanny poos and sissy poos out there that think, oh my gosh, you're being rough with your horse. Yeah, sometimes you have to be. These guys can kick you. These guys will kill you, and they do not care. I'm sorry, I'd rather hurt my horse than my horse hurt me. If it comes to something that's as dangerous, but otherwise, no, they're pretty good companion animals. Because I rather protect my horse and my horse protects me, but dude, if you're going to yank your feet away from me and kick out at me and strike at me, you're going to bet they're going to get their butt whooped. I'm not talking about whooping on him or beating on him. I just mean, you're going to correct that in any shape, form you have to. I mean, you've got a biting horse and the horse trying to rip your face off. You're just going to go, oh, Fluffy, stop that. No, you're not. And those of you that think such... That we here are such horse flippers. Yeah, I, I adopted a mule and he's a pain in the butt. I haven't given up on him. I pretty much want to be his only forever home. It's been suggested and kind of pushed for me to give him back or whatnot. But it's not really... It's kind of a goal, but not really a goal. I just really rather just get him broke to ride. Yeah. His only issue that he has is when you lead him, he likes to just take off and drag the human. And, well, I didn't get to work with that much. I think we did a few times.
And like how she doesn't keep her body straight when she goes around in those turns. Because she's not bracing. She almost has a thoroughbred appearance about her. She crosses over nice in the front end. Steps over nice in the back. She gets a little ahead of herself sometimes and doesn't keep crossing over. She'll learn how to better carry herself. Slow her down just a bit. There you go. Now she's doing it perfect every time. The more that you can control those feet, the more that you have control over their mind. And it's not so much about control, it's about partnership, to be honest. It's not about forcing the animal to do things, it's about asking them to work with you. By making the right things easy and the wrong things difficult. Don't want to go over to the horse trailer, so we lunge in a spot where you think that you can keep your feet stuck. And then we make over at the trailer a resting spot. Don't want to stand still and quiet beside us? Then you're going to lunge around us and you're going to find out that standing next to us and stand quietly is so much better. She braces more on that side, just almost a little bit. So right now for brood mares, all I have is Harley, Quinzel, and Pretty Little Lass. Those are my brood mares. Satara, which is what Tristan's working with now. Not what, who she's working with. And then Ravenwood. Sorry, I moved the camera. Because looking over there at Raven. She's the Percher on Philly. Ravenwood Knight. Um, those two, not looking forward to like just turning around and going, oh, I'm going to breed them once they're three, four years old. Nope. These guys are going to be trained. Ravenwood is supposed to be my jousting mount along with my mountain archery mount. She's going to be the star attraction for Viking Ranch. I do have an upcoming 2023 Percher on Philly. Looking at purchasing the Blue Roan. Yes, I've already been spoke, spoke to the breeder. The breeder is aware. Plans have already set. Just waiting on the foals to, well, be born, obviously, because yeah, you can't pick them out of their mares when you can't see them. Um... Xander will be used for breeding to the Percherons for Spanish Normandies. And for those of you that think, oh my goodness, you have to have only registered stock. Well, sadly, I don't like to breed on registered stock. I'd rather have registered. But the cool thing here, you breed Xander, who is Xavier Dorian Del Bravo, our Andalusian. You breed him to a non-registered mare. All of his foals are still can be registered. ILHA doesn't matter if it's draft horse, thoroughbred, pinto, paint, core horse. It don't matter what it is. It can be registered with ILHA as a half Andalusian. So there you go. The only way that you cannot register a Percheron Philly bred to an Andalusian as a Spanish Normandy is if the Percheron mayor is not registered. This is why I want to get an ANCCE 
stallion because not only will that one be able to possibly be registered pre as long as it passes all the qualifications for being pre, but can also be registered with ILHA because it don't effing matter what the confirmation and everything is. Pardon my English again. And all of its foals can be registered with the ILHA whether it's purebred or not purebred. And if it's purebred, it's confirmationally correct, you have not only an ANCCE foal that's guaranteed, you also can have a pre-foal, an ILHA foal, and so forth. And if you breed that ANCC stallion out to an AQHA mare, guess what? That foal can now be registered with the Azteca Association ILHA. So you have a double registered foal. Yeah, and that's some cool facts. I should actually put that up on our website. Because a lot of people think, oh, you're just breeding trash. I don't know. Not technically breeding trash, people. Look at this confirmation on this filly. She's upright and correct. Don't breed for trash. I breed for good minds. Everything else. So Tara was born on May 13th of 2021. And look at this. She is a six-month-old filly. Technically not a filly. She's a weanling. I want to breed things that can work. Work for people. My plan is getting into these draft crosses, and you know, I, you know, people think, oh, oh draft crosses, so you're just going to cross it with a quarter horse and just call it a draft cross. Nope. Spanish Normandies, that's going to be one of my crosses, and then I am going to work on getting a double LP Appaloosa. Knobstropper is actually the one that I really want, but that's going to take me just a little bit longer to work towards. That will be what will be putting spots on my drafts. Yes, actual spots, not painted markings. Actual spots. I love spots. And I wanted it in a little bit of a larger form. And I wanted it in something that somebody could go, oh, nice warm blood. Not a backyard breeder. I just don't throw two horses together and go, ha ha, let's take more babies. Nope. Because otherwise I'd have a lot of more mares than what I do. We are almost at 38 minutes on this video. We are at 28 minutes. And 27 seconds. Alright, Tristan says we're good. I'm done blabbing, trying to figure out things to talk about. So, we're going to end it here.